welcome. I'm Jose. And I'm Dee. And we're your token theater friends. We're putting a splash of color to criticism since 2018. Yay! So today we're going to be talking about three shows. Jerry Springer at the Opera at the New Group, Kings at the Public Theater, and High Noon at Axis Theater. It takes place in a small town in the 19th century where the sheriff just got married. It's his very last day on the job. And just about he's about to leave town with his new wife, he learns that one of his biggest enemies, some guy he sent to prison for murder, is coming back to town. Like, the movie's one of my favorite movies. It was, it's a 1952 film, and it was a wonderful take on McCarthyism. So I have to say that I really like the vision that director Randy Sharp, who's also the artistic director of Axis Theater Company, mm -hmm. had for this show. It yeah. was it was very fast. It's an hour long. It moved, you know, super quick. It felt like it was edited like a movie in a mm -hmm. way. It's interesting you say that the original. I haven't seen the original movie because I'm not a big fan of westerns. But the original was an allegory, allegory for McCarthyism, and I think this version was like an allegory for gun control and toxic masculinity. But unfortunately, we're gonna have to mm -hmm. inaugurate our very first pale fail mm. with the show Sad face. this show featured an entirely white ensemble and it was there was like 10 people on yes. stage and this was especially bothersome to me because one of the characters is has a as a hispanic last name in mm -hmm. the show they explain that she married a hispanic guy so technically you know it could have been a white lady mm -hmm. who married a hispanic person but i mean this character, Helen Ramirez, in the 1952 movie, was played by the incredible Mexican actress, Katy Jurado, who was even nominated for a Golden Globe for it. So, you know, if in 1952, at, you know, peak Hollywood whiteness, right. they were Racism able to too. find a Mexican actress, <laughs> how does a theater company in 2018 in New York City how are, how are they unable to do this? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. There are no kings in the show. It's mainly ladies, four people, three women, and it's about the lobbyists and how lobbyists are and money are basically controlling the uh, controlling all of our politicians. I didn't come in expecting to like it because I'm not a big fan of political drama on stage because I, I or on TV because I always feel like it's really overwrought and they over dramatize it. Uh, but what I appreciate about about Kings was that it was just. And it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't sentimental about what it was talking about, but it was very clear on where it stood. And I found it refreshing because it was mostly women talking to each other about their jobs, which if you know anything about American entertainment, women are not allowed to talk about our jobs very often to each other. So I love that it passes the Bechdel test oh, with like flying yeah. marks. Yeah, it, it like leapt o over it in like the first scene. Yes. Yeah. And, but the one thing that I have to say about the show is that, and this is obviously completely personal, but I just don't have the heart anymore to see, you know, smart, well-prepared, strong women lose political battles. Oh my god! I, Did you just spoil the show for well, some? Well, I mean, maybe, <laughs> but I, I just don't have the heart for it anymore. No, that, it's interesting you brought that up because one failing I did think about the play was it presented a problem that we all know about and it presented that problem very well. But I, I, like, I like my theater to, you know, pre give me something to think about in terms of solutions or ways that I can help change the world, especially when it's like political theater. In the opera, Jerry Springer is played by the incredible Terrence Mann who is in the middle of one of his episodes when someone shoots him. So the second half of the show basically takes place in the afterlife where the devil, played by the incredible Will Swenson, mm -mm. forces poor Jerry to do an episode of his show in hell. Jerry Springer's like so American. Mm. You know, for better or for worse, he represents a lot of what America is. Yeah, And I does. like how Richard Thomas filtered that but it's also about like our love of CD reality television because I remember being like 
seven or eight years old watching Jerry Springer on late night and being really compelled by it. And you can see, you can see the line from that to like the Kardashians to, you know, the present White House, you know. So what I found what I found really interesting was like it was kind of like watching an, an episode of Jerry Springer show where just like I liked it despite like how terrible everyone on that stage was. It was really entertaining and but then afterwards I left and I was like that was that was odd. I feel kind of guilty for liking <laughs> that. But I and but I will say that ensemble is like one of the most talented ensemble like in New York right now because they all play like two or three roles. You know, I want to give a big shout out to Justin Keys who plays Jesus and who also plays a man who wants to be a baby. And he's a beautiful singer and he's shirtless half of the time, which is, you know, when you're watching musical theater, that's basically all that's basically all you want. <laughs> okay, so now let's pick the show that we would go see again. If we had to pay for it. Yes. So deep. Uh, can can I break our only one episode long rule so far? <laughs> sure. <laughs> by saying Black Plight by Daniel Alexander Jones at the Public Theater slash Joe's Pub slash the person we're interviewing in approximately, you know, two minutes. That's cheating. Well, I'm gonna go with Jerry Springer at the opera because I think it's a lot of fun. It has like an incredible cast. It has great music. Mm -hmm. And hey, you get Terrence Mann and Will Swenson, two Javerts for the price of one ticket. So go see it. Javert, you mean? Yeah. Javert? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Shirtless Jesus. <laughs> so next up, we took a little trip to the public theater to talk to the Amazing. Amazing. Daniel Alexander Jones about his new show, Black Light. So let's take a look. So can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about what the show is about? Yeah, sure. So it's centered around my alter ego, Joe Mama Jones, uh, who I, I always think of less as a character and more as a an energy that visits me, right? And this show feels like a, a response to the moment we're in, uh, mm. to the current political, social climate, and thinking about the crossroads that we're at as a nation. Uh, and so I let Joe Mama respond to that idea. Mm -hmm. So we wrote a bunch of new songs, we took some of our favorite songs uh, from our records, and I pulled together this extraordinary band yeah, and it's a lot of fun, I think, you know, even though it goes deep, <laughs> you know, I think <laughs> it, it invites you to have fun too. Those you know, like each song yeah. reminded me of another artist that I love. Great. And I'm really curious about what your process is in both paying tribute to artists that you clearly love so much, but also crafting, you know, new music yes. that's all your own. I love that question. Um, so, you know, uh, they're, they're a constant presence with me, those songs and those albums and those artists. Uh, and when I sit down to write, I, I usually am, I start with a question. And that question will, will be like a, kind of like the oyster suffering the pearl, like it rubs me, it rubs me. Mm -hmm. And and I then go uh, to one of my collaborators and we talk about the idea, you know, we talk about the question, um, but we work very quickly. I do with all of my songwriting collaborators, it's a quick process. And then I look back and I'm like, oh wow, there is a tie to a Sade song or, or, or you know, a, 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 a song by, uh, Tina Marie or Prince for sure, yeah. um, but rarely is it that we've gone out and picked a song and modeled <laughs> it. You know, it's it's kind of in our blood, you know, mm -hmm. and that that feels really thrilling to me. So. Uh, the first line your mama says in the show is, "What if I told you everything is going to be all right?" Mm -hmm. And especially in this moment of things feeling like feeling very unsteady, like how do you stay positive? For me, it is. It is 100% that I come from the lineage of artists and activists and family members that I do, that I look back and I see that they faced equally, if not more, sobering times. And it's overwhelming right now, mm -hmm. and I think especially for those of us who, who you know, felt in the shift toward the Obama administration a certain kind of, of movement away from a, a particular kind of, of right-wing ideology 
it's been a really harsh awakening to to have that restored and be so aggressively uh, central to our experience in the nation right now. Okay, so Jamala yeah. Jones does 13 costume changes in okay. black light. <laughs> so what is the key to a really fast costume change? It's sort of, I, I kind of made the analogy the other day, it's the my assistant who's doing the costume change kind of has to hurl herself at Jamama like a howler monkey. <laughs> like just go at it, you know, and like, and let and we, you know, we kind of say a little prayer. It's a little bit like a car wash, uh, an attack. It's, yeah, you just have to go at it. Thank you so much, Daniel. We Thank loved you. your show and we love you and we oh, hope you're going to be back our show. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to speak with you, and I look forward to next time. Welcome back. And for today's 11 o'clock number, which we will not be singing, but we you know we had a question or a comment from our from our first episode. Oh my God, you guys are delivering so much already. <laughs> but Jean wrote, I hope that Token Theater friends will address ways to get paying POC audiences into theater seats. I, I have thoughts on that. <laughs> so I feel like when we're talking about how to get you know people who look like us into theater, I, and I, I, I always come back to the field of dreams. You know, like if you build it, they will come. You frequent like Repertorial Espanol, and I frequent Mayi Theater Company in New York City. Both theaters of color, doing works by people of color, and those are places I see the most POC audiences. There's also, I think, a very huge need for some sensitivity training, especially mm -hmm. with like white people who work in theaters. Because I cannot tell you the number of times where ushers at Broadway theaters have asked me if I'm sure I'm in the right place. Like, you know, like, especially when like I have orchestra seats, you know, because I'm a critic, right? And they're like, are you sure you're not supposed to be like upstairs? Because sometimes, I don't feel welcome, and I go I go to hundreds of shows every year. Sometimes I don't feel welcome in theaters. Right, and if you're not going to welcome Jose with his amazing hair, facial hair, and top knot and diva shirts, <laughs> like how, how how are you going to welcome other young people? Also, that you know, like Dominic Morisot wrote that amazing mm. piece for American Theater yeah. about you know like all like the old white people shushing young people of color who go to the theater because they and don't... And who laugh. Yeah. We just like, we laugh and we, and we like to, you know, engage with what it is that we're seeing. We don't like to sit back and be like, yes. Yes, show, show me. I think we should wrap it up for our second so soon. episode. Oh. If you want more, let us know. If you want less, let us know. Or if you have any other thoughts, just leave us a comment below. Until then, Token Theater Friends, out. Bye. Bye. How can Deep and I become your new vibrations? Oh my gosh. You just have to come to a rehearsal. Just okay. come to practice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and just, you know, like do your vocal warm ups and uh, come to practice and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, we love the current vibrations. Yeah, but, I know, know, but like you know, like, yeah. there you go, yeah. you never know. They could end up, you know, somehow strangely locked out of the building yeah. right before the show, <laughs> so we never know. <laughs>